This lesson is an introduction to the Emacs text editor. Emacs is much newer than VI. It's a product of the Free Software Foundation and is available for every flavor of Unix. It comes installed on many systems and Linux is one of them. It's becoming very popular with programmers. Nobody knows just how popular it is, but through some informal surveys on my part, the world of Unix seems to be about evenly divided between VI types and Emacs types. If you've used a text editor inside another environment somewhere, even inside an IDE, you'll find that the Emacs editor is more what you're accustomed to than VI because of the controls required to navigate through the text. Emacs is designed for you to live inside the editor. That is, along with editing, it has email and other communications capabilities. And you can do your compiling and debugging from inside the editor. Not everybody uses it this way, but the capabilities are there if you want to go in and find out how to use them. There are actually two versions of the editor on Linux. One works strictly from a character-based terminal, and the other pops up its own window. When you start Emacs, it takes a look at the environment you're running in and determines which version to run. You can start it from the command line this way. Because this is an X window session, Emacs chose to run the version of itself that displays as a window. To move around inside the document, you can use the four arrow keys to move the cursor in the four directions. Also, the home and end keys can be used to switch from the top or the bottom. You can also position the cursor with the mouse. This editor has an almost unlimited number of configuration options, but I just left it set to the defaults. Even at that, you can see that it has color highlighted the tag names in the HTML document. Now, it was able to figure out by looking at the contents of the file that it has loaded an HTML page. So it loaded the syntax analyzer for that kind of document and will help you with your edits. Notice here, at the bottom of the window, it states that the edit session is based on the syntax of HTML, but it customizes the edit session even further. Because it knows what type of document is being edited, a special set of functions exist just for HTML. They're available here on this menu, or as you can see, they can also be invoked by the keyboard. This C minus notation refers to the control key. For example, to add a tag, the sequence is control C, control C, and the letter N. To add an image to the page, the keystroke sequence is control C, control C, and the letter I. Emacs will recognize the source code of almost any programming language and has special editing features for each one. You can even add your own editing features and add your own set of rules that's used to recognize the type of document, but that's pretty advanced stuff. As you can see, all of the menu items can be invoked by special keystrokes. To open a file, you can enter Control X, Control F. Now this text editor is very, very large, and it has lots of capabilities. It provides a complete tutorial that takes you through itself step by step. You will, through the tutorial, see references to the Meta key, which on a PC is the Alt key. The name Meta is used because it's the name of the key on many Unix systems, and Emacs was born on Unix. Some Unix keyboards call it the Edit key. Only the IBM PC keyboard calls it Alt. Whether you use the VI editor or the Emacs editor is up to you. Which one you choose is strictly a matter of personal preference. But one thing seems to be universal. Once a person has found a text editor that they like, nothing will make them change. Two people arguing about which editor is better in some way or other always leads nowhere. So pick your editor carefully because it looks like it'll be with you for the rest of your life.